Ivy, these Taisho Kodo look a little different than they usually do. Why is that? If you stop and think about it, it's not that surprising, really. It isn't? Naturally, differences in the environment we play in create differences in the instrument. I'm studying how differences in the environment create differences in the Taisho Kodo. What kind of differences exist in how people play? Well, Ash, what I'm looking into right now is Taisho Kodo that are more solitary versus those that have a group dynamic. That's great, Professor. Tell me more. People interested in music may end up playing in school ensembles, clubs, bands with friends. Thus, part of the experience of playing music is playing with others, and there's tons of devices to assist in that. Looking specifically at devices made for the Taisho Kodo, we start with the Suzuki SA-10, which has 10 ports in. We have the Comnix CM120, which has 5 ports in, and then has adjustments for bass and timber. And then we have specialized amps, like the Comnix CA-30 and 50. The CA-30 has multiple inputs and a special 3-band EQ slider, and the 50 has a 5-band EQ slider. So this is all great, but what about the equipment when you have no one to play with? What about those people that just want to play at home alone? There are plenty of people that turn on a song at home and just want to jam to it. Plenty of people that sit down to their favorite album and dream of playing in a band. Certainly someone is thinking of this poor soul to help them practice, to help them play for fun, to help suck money out of their wallet. This is where digital accompaniment comes in. In the early 1990s, we get companies start to put out auto accompaniment devices. Specifically in 1991, we have the Comnex CKA5. This is a personal accompaniment device with a built-in ROM player and built-in amp. That means no need for an amp and you can plug in one of many ROMs from the company that have tons of songs preloaded on them. You can then practice and play with the metronome feature as well as the part partitioning. This part partitioning has two pieces. It means you can A, turn on and off certain instruments in the song, and B, start and end at certain parts of the song. It also lets you change the tempo without changing the pitch, so you can practice along before playing at the appropriate speed. Now the unfortunate part here is that when you turn on and off the individual instruments for the accompaniment, there is bleed through. It's almost as if they're just applying a selective filter around certain frequencies to try and mask the instrument, but it still comes through. You'll actually see that carry forward to some later designs we look at. As far as this specific line of devices, Comnix actually still sells this line now under the CMA15 name. Then we also have the Oreda Torio THA10. This is just a more advanced ROM player. It has volume selection for each part rather than just on off and it has more options as far as selecting where in the song you are. Then we have a combo which looks more like the classic speaker. This is the Suzuki SA18 and you can see a little ROM card slot. Each of these ROM cards contain songs that you can play along with, but they're closely linked to the Taisho Kodos that we're going to talk about in the next section. Essentially, Kawai creates a Taisho Kodo that uses the ROM cards, Suzuki has the SA line of amps, they integrate the ROM cards into the SA line of amps as the SA18, and then they follow up later with their own Taisho Kodo that uses the ROM cards. 
And then we also have the Roland MT90U music player. This works in much the same way with part selection metronome and some training assist features. However, instead of a ROM port, this now has a USB port. You could attach a USB CD ROM port here and use the special CDs sold by Roland with special tracks on them to practice to, or a USB floppy drive and play with standard MIDI on it. Who's that? So then the next logical step for these companies was to integrate the accompaniment into the Taisho Kodos. Cut down on the extra gear you needed to lug around, cut down on the gear you needed to buy, cut down on the power supplies you needed. These digital accompaniment Taisho Kodos aim at allowing you to play or practice without needing anything extra. In that, I think the prices are a little interesting. I'll show you the prices that these things came out with, but keep in mind what other things cost at the time. We're alleviating the need for cables, amps, accompaniment devices, multiple devices, etc. The Kawaii K1100 was the first of its kind in 1993. It came out for 148,000 yen at the time with 6 strings and 27 buttons. It has 9 built-in songs and you can get special ROM cards that have 10 additional songs per card. It's worth noting that these cards were interchangeable with the Yamabiko, which we'll talk about next, and the SA18 speaker that we already talked about. Cards for those can be used here, these cards can be used there. In addition, we have 12 built-in rhythms separate from the songs, a single output for the pickups and auto accompaniment. We have a bottom speaker and a top resonator cavity, and it works off adapter or battery. Much like the previous auto accompaniment devices, you can turn on and off certain instruments during the songs, but there's still a lot of bleed through, so you can still hear it. It just softens the part. Now let's take a look at a demo of the songs and rhythms of the K1100. Next up we have the Suzuki Yama Biko, which translates as Echo. This was Suzuki's follow-up in 1995 for 98,500 yen. This one is 27 buttons and 5 strings rather than 6 strings. 
There's eight built-in songs, and we still have specialized ROM cards which add additional songs, this time six per card. There's 12 built-in rhythms, we still have instruments that can be turned on and off during songs, and this is still battery or AC adapter. We have a speaker on the bottom, we've lost the resonator cavity on top, we have a cool little kickstand on the bottom left side to elevate the device, and we still have a single combined output for the auto accompaniment slash Taisho Koto pickups. It's cheaper, which comes with time and improved manufacturing, but I also think there's something here about IP. There was likely saved money from not having the same development cost as Kawaii. The instrument parts which turn on and off still have the same issue of instrument bleed through as the K1100. In addition, the ROM cards can be shared between the two. The ROM cards for the K1100 can be used here, and these ones can be used on that one. It seems likely to me that there was shared IP, whether or not the design was sold, the same third-party manufacturer was used, or there was just general collaboration. Once again, let's look at a demo of the songs and rhythms. Now this one was more popular than the Kawaii version, so you'll see more of them around. The Kawaii version is actually pretty rare nowadays. In addition, you will see this pop up in some media, some music videos, but it's not often labeled as the correct thing, so it may be hiding in plain sight. And then we're on to the Suzuki Ayu. This came out in 2006. It sold for 98,500 yen and came with a book of songs, which I'll pop up. Now this book of songs is the sheet music to allow you to play along to the 90 built-in songs on the device using your five strings and 27 keys. In addition, new to this device was two outputs. One output for the Taisho Koto pickups and one for the auto accompaniment. 
The part separation was also much better this time around. When you turn off individual parts, there was no longer any bleed through and the part actually turns off. Finishing off the basics, we have 26 built-in rhythms in addition to the songs, no option for battery, adapter, only a bottom speaker, and no resonator hole on top. But now we pull back to some of the more advanced features, such as the MIDI. Rather than the ROM port with the custom ROM cards, this now sports a 3.5 inch floppy port. The floppy drive supports the two common formats of the time, DD and HD. It was thus pretty common to see floppy disks floating around with your favorite songs on them or Taisho Kodo learning floppies. The other fun thing that you could do though is that you can insert any floppy with standard MIDI files so you can drop in your own MIDI to play with. And the MIDI support on this is no slouch. It supports 275 tones with 11 drum sets. Then we come back to some of the features for the accompaniment side of this device. We have tuning tone, play in, cue, and count in, song stop, play, rewind, and fast forward, song and rhythm selection buttons, part selectors for different instruments, markers for locations in the song along with repeat at those markers, a metronome, tempo selectors for the internal songs as well as the floppy MIDI, reverb for the recorded parts aka MIDI and internal songs, and then key change. Key change here, of course, means that you can change the key of the songs you're playing along to. So let's take three little demo pit stops. We'll demo some rhythms and songs. We'll demo some of the MIDI features, and then we'll demo some of the special features for the digital accompaniment.
Now I want to take a quick little detour into floppiness. You can feel free to skip this section if you have no interest. I do find that information on this nowadays is dwindling, and if you want to get into this and use the IU for instance, you might want to know something or other about it. The 3.5 inch floppy disk was created by Sony in 1981, but it took some time for adoption over the 5 and a quarter floppy disk. Given a little while, we had larger adoption by some of the big names, aka Apple, Atari, Commodore, and we got the 720KB disk. Then in 1987, we had the high density HD disk, 1.44 megabytes. Now right here, we've already mentioned the double density, DD, and high density HD. Those are the HD and the DD discs that you see when you're looking on Amazon or whatnot. So if you're trying to understand the difference, there it is. It's just the storage size. Now in and of itself, the IU supports both of these formats and they're the most common. In 1991, we have the ED extra high density disc, which came out but didn't catch on. Good example is the Cowell MF2 ED. Then the Super Disc comes out in 1997 from the company 3M, but also didn't catch on. Essentially what I'm saying is after the HD disc, no one cared. So then the Suzuki IU came out in 2006. It could use all of these, but they chose not to because it's dumb and needs different readers. So they chose the two most common, the 2DD and the 2HD. Floppy disks are programmed through magnetic encoding, so the compatibility can be tough because it's all based on magnetic strength. Sometimes you can use up encoding or down encoding, aka DD in HD drives and vice versa, but there's always questions about data fidelity. An interesting tidbit on this is the HD disks have a second hole in the top. If you cover the second hole, a lot of readers will read it as a DD disk and treat it as such. Other than the weird formats and the hardware, if you're questioning what's the difference, which one should I get, it does not matter. HD, as discussed, has higher memory and is less rare, so just go for that. So now let's do some comparisons. I want to start with some comparisons against basic acoustic Taisho Kodos, and then I want to work into comparisons both through the external speakers and recorded of the built-in songs and rhythms.
Our hero ends the day a little less lonely and a little more technologically advanced. But technology waits for no one. Join us next time as we dive into Taisho Kodo synthesizers. So, Ash, what do you think of my research? This is great, Professor. You must know everything about Taisho Kodo. In the research community, we've actually only just scraped the surface. Wow, Taisho Kodo are amazing. This is why I'm going to be the greatest Taisho Kodo master of all. Ah. There's Taisho Kodo that haven't even been discovered yet. So by going around and collecting them all, you're doing the research community a huge favor. You got that right. Bye. 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 Matane.